Today, I'm here to tell you a fish story about the best day of spear fishing in my life. Out of all the fish I've speared, not a single one compares to the fish that I just got. I just landed my dream fish and the fish of a lifetime. Where to begin? Let's back it up, I guess, to the beginning of this story. My boyfriend and I sailed over to one of the most remote islands in the Bahamas, somewhere we have been dying to go for a while now. And we got the invite from one of my Bahamian friends. So he's over here on his boat. We sailed over to meet him, dropped anchor, had a nice dinner, and talked about the plans for the next day. Our friend wanted to do a land tour, but after looking at the weather, Cole insisted that we go out on the water for a dive day and do some scouting. At this point, we didn't have anything in our fridge, so the focus was to go out, get some conch, get a couple lobster, maybe do some deep reef and try to find a yellow wing grouper, which is our friend's favorite fish. That morning, we woke up, we took our time, we weren't in a hurry, and we decided to take my boat, Sail V, out on a spear fishing mission. We just got to a new amazing location that neither of us had been to before so we're just trying to figure out this place it's the first day a uh, beautiful day we started by grabbing a couple of conch found out that the conch are plentiful here after grabbing a couple of conch we decided to go to the deep reef within a couple of minutes we spotted two really nice yellow wing grouper and cold dove down and secured a beautiful yellow wing thanks Steph Thanks for the support right there. But that was just like the beginning of the day. So we got conch, we got the yellowfin grouper. But Jeremy insisted that we go check for some lobster. He said, I know where there's gonna be some good lobsters. Having that local Bahamian knowledge was really important. He took us into the shallows and literally dropped us right on the lobster. We did one dive down and Cole got a lobster, I got a lobster. We secured one more and we jumped back on the boat. That took about 10 minutes. At that point, our day was already made, but now we have conch, grouper, lobster, but it's still early, like, and it's a beautiful day. It's only 1 p.m. It's not even late in the day, and it's our first day here. Cole had mentioned earlier in the day about drifting for Wahoo, and that had stuck in my head. So when we jumped on the boat, I wasn't quite ready to go in and set anchor. So I said, hey, why don't we go and just do one drift for Wahoo? Just check it out and see if they're here. So we went for it. We switched up everything, attached the float line, and put our floats out. We got out to the blue water, and as Cole and I were preparing our gear, I looked at my fish finder and said, hey, Jeremy, is that what Wahoo looked like? Because I saw some little blips on the screen. And he said, no, no, and all of a sudden, boom. We had an entire school of Wahoo under our boat. And he said, yes, that is exactly what Wahoo looked like. Cole and I were really excited. We knew that the fish were in the area and we decided to gear up and get ready to jump in blue water. When hunting Wahoo, you have to ensure that your gear is secure and in good shape. One small little kink, can cause you to lose the fish of a lifetime. So we gear up, make sure our gear is right. We put our fins on, our wetsuit tops. We have our masks, our snorkels, our gloves, our weight belts, and we jump in with the pole spears attached to float lines. Both of us are diving with the nine foot Nomad roller. And jumped in the deep water, couldn't see the bottom. Cole lets the flasher down to about 30 feet of depth and starts slowly chunking the chum. Didn't take long maybe five minutes we saw our first fish big big fat fish uh it wasn't didn't have a pointed nose like most wahoo it was very like blunt and rounded and it was a it was a big fish oh it's a fatty, fatty. <laughs> We're seeing single fish swim in one at a time. Cole and I dive really well together. So when we're diving together, we always do one up, one down. So one person on the surface while the other person dives. And we've come to the agreement that we take turns on fish. 
So when a fish swims in, it'll be my turn. I can dive on that fish whenever I want to and Cole will be my safety at the surface. I dive down, try for the fish, then I'll come up, do my breathe up, and the next fish that comes in, now it's Cole's turn to dive. And this is really good because we're not pressuring the fish, we're not stressing the fish out, and we're not diving at the same time just creating chaos. We're really methodical with it and trying to give each other the best opportunity possible to land a fish. He didn't stick around. He gave us one, I think one dive and then left. And we proceeded to see, I think three other Wahoo and reset the drift. We saw a similar Wahoo that we saw had like a little rash on its side. So we saw that fish again, which is cool. So we're seeing the same fish. They're coming in multiple times. We're taking turns diving down, but every time one of us dives, the fish just pushes deeper. They, they won't let us close the gap at all, but that's okay. We're still stoked to be seeing the fish, know that they're in the area and know that if we put in our time, we're going to be able to land one of these fish. Next thing you know, just a wolf pack just like come in and just surround us. Cole and I sur are surrounded by about 20 Wahoo. From 10 feet down to 40, 50 foot down, just like big Wahoo, like they're not small. <laughs> not a single one of them stood out as being larger than the others. And in blue water, it's really hard to tell the size of a fish because you don't have any point of comparison. It always gets hectic. It's almost harder when there's a school of Wahoo to dial in to one fish, because if you give one fish more attention, he's gonna be, he'll swim away, but there'll be his brother on the other side coming in right here, but you don't see him because you're fixated. So we just dive down, try not to look and uh, see if one of them is curious enough. So the fish are schooling around us and Cole makes a drop, gets close but doesn't take a shot. I make a drop, don't get close enough for a shot and the school leaves. Uh, we both dove, didn't happen didn't chase the fish because we were hoping the school would come back around and uh, the school didn't. At that time, we we're just so excited that we saw a school of 20 plus Wahoo that we weren't really even concerned about shooting one. We were just excited to know so many fish are in this area. That was so sick. That was crazy. Those are big. Those are big. Oh my God. I had one swimming like right at me and I like looked over and he was like, coming right at me. I was really close. Like once I made eye contact, he turned away. We're floating, get some more chum in the water. And all of a sudden, one of the fish comes back. One big one. And I think it was that same first fish that we saw because he had that blunt nose and he came around and was actually actively eating. He's eating some of the chum goes away, comes back again, and Cole makes a drop down, hangs out, super quiet, super tucked, and the fish gets close, but Cole doesn't take the shot. He would disappear for a few minutes, then he would come back at the bottom, start eating, and then he, you know, started climbing the ladder. We made about three drops on him, and you know, if it's not gonna happen, you don't see it happen, there's no point to push the envelope. If it's not to dive, it's not to dive. Don't chase him off, don't spook him. We keep putting a little bit of chum in the water, and then the fish comes back. You know, it was Steph's turn. She gave me the flasher. There was a small little shark on the surface that was, uh, he was interested. He didn't really, I don't think he really knew what we were or what we were doing. So he was coming right at us. We'd poke him with the spear and uh, he was swimming away. And Steph was diving as the shark was on the surface. So I was kind of keeping my eye on him. I'm at the surface getting a nice, good breathe up, lowering my heart rate and just trying to get as calm as possible. To me, I found that it's better if I don't load up my pole spear at the surface. When I load up my pole spear at the surface, it changes my entire dive, how it looks, how it feels. And I know that the fish can sense that too. Instead, I saw the fish come in and diving on the fish wasn't working. So I decided to dive away from the fish. Steph did a really good drop. She didn't kick too much. She looked away. She kept her spear nice and tucked and the wahoo came really close to her. I'm watching from the surface. So I'm like, oh. But I didn't notice it was close because I wasn't looking at the fish. And so he swims away and then luckily turned around and made one more pass. This time I saw that the fish was coming in and I had just enough time to rotate my body and extend my pole spear and through the spear and smashed it. It looked like a mid-body shot, looked like a good shot. Typically, I like going for a tail shot, but with this guy, he was so big, I was just trying to hit a bullseye. I ended up hitting him lower than I wanted to, so it was a bit of a stomach shot, and the fish took off. And when I say took off, it was like a bullet. Fish on! The fish ran. I actually got hit by my float line. I had to release it from my snorkel. 
And with Wahoo, you want to just let them run. It's really important that you don't put tension on the float line for the initial runs because it'll rip the shot out. So I just let the fish run and I saw my buoy running across the surface of the water. And then just the float went, it was gone. The float's only about this big and about that wide. And it was compressed to about like that thin. And it was just like a plastic bag in the wind. Like a balloon running out of air and then just disappeared. At this point, I know that I hit the fish lower than I wanted to. And I know that he took my float line, my float, everything. I wasn't confident that I was gonna land this fish. I wasn't even confident that I was ever gonna see any of my gear again. I yell for the boat, fish on. He's coming and the uh, float's gone. We take it and we just start swimming. I get double leg cramp, uh, which sucked, but pushed through it at that point in time. Oh, my legs are crampy. It's okay. <sighs> <sighs> yeah, okay? yeah, I'm good. And luckily the float popped up about a hundred yards away. Look for the float. The float's down. Keep an eye out. I took off swimming as fast as I could. Cole right behind me. Woo! Holy! And we swam over to the buoy. When I got over to my float, it was hovering about 40 feet down and the Wahoo took it down for a second time. Again, out of sight, totally disappeared. Where'd it go? It went down again. It's down! The fish ran about another 50 yards and then boom, the float popped up again. There it is. It's always a little nerve wracking when you see the float pop up because you're not sure if the fish pulled the shot. I was still nervous that I didn't get a good holding shot and I wasn't sure if the fish was attached. But as I swam over to the float and got hands on it, I looked down and I could see the fish at 40 meters down. Hey babe, you feel okay? Has to be higher than that. Steph tells me to uh, check for the shot. Meanwhile, the fish is 40 meters down. I say you're gonna have to pull it up a little bit higher than that for me to check. So she pulls it up, pulls it up, pulls it up. I just had leg cramps, so I'm like, all right, I gotta dive down, check this shot. So once I think I can get down there, I uh, did about two drops and said it was good, thumbs up pull it up. I didn't want to lose this fish by pulling too hard on the float line trying to get it to the surface. So Cole made a drop down and just looked at the fish and saw that my shot penetrated, that the warhead slip tip had engaged on the other side and that the shot was holding really well in the stomach. The Dyneema was good. It wasn't ripping or anything like that. So we decided on not giving her my pole spear to put a second shot and the fish was subdued. I continued to pull the fish to the surface. I got the fish up to the surface and this is the point that I realized how big this fish was. When she brought it to the surface, holy smokes, like the head on it, I, I thought it had potential to be a hundred pound fish. The head on it was just massive, like <laughs> it's bigger than Steph's body. Like she's hiding behind the fish and you just see this giant head and it's just massive. I hadn't realized to this point, I knew it was powerful because it took the float down, but I had no idea how big it was until I got my hands on it. As the fish came up, I went ahead and grabbed the tail. Once I got both of my hands on its tail, now I have to somehow get my hand in the gill. So I was really nervous the fish was gonna try to run again and try to shake out of my hand. And if it did, I wasn't gonna be strong enough to hold it. And that's when things get a little dangerous. Wahoo have really sharp teeth and they have spikes on their dorsal. So it could get pretty dangerous. And Cole can't help me. Uh, he can just sit there and keep sharks off. Luckily we didn't have any sharks, uh, but he was just kind of giving me words of encouragement to, to get this fish. So I have the tail in my hands, but I'm not big enough to reach the gill from the tail. So I actually took the tail, put it between my legs, and I bear hugged this fish, secured the fish, grabbed my dive knife, and I humanely dispatched the fish right away. At this point, I lost my mind. Oh my God! Congratulations! That's crazy. I was screaming so loud because I realized that I had landed the fish of a lifetime, the fish I had been dreaming about, the fish I have been manifesting for so long, and it was in my hands. <laughs> That's a monster stuff. <laughs>
It was just something special. I know it was a fish of a lifetime for Steph, a dream come true, something she's been after for a while. Come so, so close to several times, but just couldn't, couldn't make it happen. And uh, you know, it's, sometimes it's the days you least expect it to, where everything comes together. Got the fish, swam it over to the boat. As we're swimming to the boat, beep, 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 my GoPro dies. I mean, like, the fact that we got it on film was very lucky in itself. Our friend is losing his mind. Look at what this woman just did. Holy <laughs> shit. Holy <laughs> That's a beautiful fish. On a pole spear in the middle of the fing ocean. Lunatic. <laughs> Woo! Congratulations. Yeah. Look at that fing fish. <laughs> A lot of Bahamians aren't familiar with spear fishing. They think the concept is a bit crazy. So for a girl to pull a fish like that up to the boat is something they don't see often. So he's losing his mind. He, I hand the fish up to him. He grabs it by the gills, but actually by himself, he can't pull it all the way onto the boat. So I quickly jump on the boat, try to grab another GoPro, grab the fish, uh, help Jeremy get it up the steps, and we're just blown away. I'm just getting the camera. <laughs> this should be documented. Of course. Yeah. Oh my God. Might be a hundred. It's a big fish. Oh, oh. oh my God! I can't believe I just did that. Oh my gosh! Congrats. And now we realize how massive this fish actually is. We take a moment to just recognize what a beautiful fish it is, what a powerful fish it is, and what a huge accomplishment this has been. No, that's that's men's and women's world record right there. Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> everywhere. He took my float under, like ran so hard. Twice. Well, I kind of Let's go right now. Let's take the boat into the marina. That, that's bigger than 71 pounds, and that's the men's record. Oh, no, no, no. That, that's an 80, I think it's 80, 85. Really? Scott, but it held. So I hit him here. It penetrated. The shot came all the way through to the other side. He took off. From the water, we lost the float. Like, it went under. It went. Cole and I were swimming as fast as we could. Yeah. You got leg cramp. I got double leg cramp. And I was like, are you okay? Okay, good. I saw it uh, like underwater. Like yeah, oh, underwater. the float was completely compressed. Yeah. Stuff. You got boogies. Now you got boogies on your cheek. We like it. That's all right. Here. It's real. It's real. Real boogies. Not fake boogies. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. good. You're good. And the whole time, I don't know if my shot penetrated. You got so close. I, I was like, how do you not take the shot right there? Yeah. And then it turned and came even closer. Yeah. I, like, I saw our fins go down. 45 seconds or so later, the buoy just went. Oh man. So I instinctively freaking pegged it and come running at you. And I didn't know what you were doing. What are you doing? Like this? I was like, stay away! It's oh, down! God. It's ready to hit you! Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but hey, right, listen, when we shoot fish in the Bahamas, the first thing we do is we come running at the, at the, at the, at the person who's speaking the fish. We want to get him in the Yeah, water, yeah. You know? Oh wow. man. We got a fish on! Oh man. Unreal. Fed that fish for a while. Yeah, we fed that fish for a while. I didn't truly realize until we got back to the dock and we lifted the fish up on the certified scale and the scale read 84.6 pounds. <laughs> 84.6! 84.6! I'll never forget that feeling. I realized in that moment that I had just speared the biggest Wahoo ever recorded on pole spear. That was awesome. Sweet, awesome. <laughs> awesome. Sweet. I know I know you won't get me doing that. Not no. why? No. I'll oh, catch man. him on an eye, but three days from now, I yeah. got hang a 150 right there. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. Even here without a 150. <laughs> <laughs> I think I bring that big black boat all the What? And to be in the Bahamas where I started this journey and where my dream came alive and to share it with the locals who were there and to share it with our friend who was driving my boat and to share it with Cole. Uh, it was just a really special, special experience that I'll never forget. 
as long as I live. <laughs> Fact of the matter is, uh, Steph made history that day. It's a world record fish, smashed not only her current woman's world record, Wahoo, it smashed the guys. The reason why it's important for me to submit the records is because I am passionate about introducing women to the sport of spearfishing and introducing women to the idea that they can be out there in the blue right next to the men, securing big fish and providing for their friends and family. It's impressive. It's something special. Very happy to be a part of it. Uh, I think one of the coolest things was it happened on her boat. She had this dream and she chased it and made it happen. I think you could see the joy in her face. <laughs> Uh, it took a while to resonate and no other sailboats were the only one here to set a record with our friend for him to be a part of it. Something completely new to him and wow, yeah, stoked. They say luck is when preparation meets opportunity and I had a lot of luck with this fish. I've spent years in blue water learning Wahoo's behavior, learning how to hunt them, fine tuning my equipment and Preparation definitely meant opportunity on this day. In addition to the huge accomplishment, I knew that this fish was gonna go and feed so many people, and I was gonna be able to give so much to the locals, and that's something I absolutely love doing. I understand that I'm in their country, and to pull up to the dock and be able to feed some of the people of the local community is something that just makes me really excited. There you go. <laughs> what you gonna do with it? It's gonna be real deep fried and serve for safe for a couple of years wow. <laughs> at least another year <laughs> at least another <laughs> year love it yeah. <laughs> cool. you, i love you guys <laughs> thank Having you a good time in spear fishing it's all about the details and something i love about headhunter is that they are so focused on the details brad and mike spend countless hours in the water testing their equipment fine-tuning every single component of it uh, willing to try new things and i just want to say a big thank you to headhunter for believing in me and supporting me in my journey to this very moment thank you